The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Peter Johnson at WheatPeat, realagriculture.com, and I couldn't be more excited. Another episode of Real Wheat Growers. We are talking about the Yen Yield Enhancement Network, the 2022 results. And if you don't know what the Yen is, it's really a process where a whole bunch of farmers enter the program and we look at all the different parameters of their management and we end up with a final yield, but not just a yield contest. We're also looking at percent of yield potential. So we look at what their maximum yield could have been, and that just gives us so much more information. And then the grower looks at that and says, okay, maybe I can change something and get even better. Of course, the program is supported by Michigan State University, the Michigan Wheat Program, Grain Farmers of Ontario, University of Guelph, Ministry of Agriculture and Food, Rural Affairs here in Ontario, and a whole bunch of other people. If you're not in it, you probably should join, but let's get to our interview today. I couldn't be more excited. Andy Timmermans, number two in both yield and percent of yield potential this year. Welcome, Andy. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Pete. Glad to be here. Yeah. So, so Andy, first off, I just want to mention that you've just gotten back from New Zealand and talking with Eric Watson and David Weath. Of course, number they, they did have the Guinness World Book of Records. They just got uh, put out or, or replaced by Tim Lammyman. How important is it to go out of country and and learn from these stellar wheat growers? Oh, Pete, yeah, it's, it's awesome. You know, it was a great visit. We, uh, you know, just, just to be able to, to listen to them and hear, you know, how many applications, you know, five fungicides, five nitrogen applications, two PGRs. Uh, of course, he has irrigation and he has a climate that we all would die for to grow wheat. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and so for people that don't know you, Andy, I kind of consider you to be uh, an all in wheat grower here in Ontario. Like you, you are pushing the bar on all of those applications. And then you go to New Zealand, it's like, holy snap. And I, I'm not a high input grower at all, like gosh, compared to those guys, but they do have a different climate. That's for sure. And so just on the yen, 150 Bushels per acre, 79% of yield potential, like just stellar results. What jumps to mind in terms of in the yen program that, that you look at in your report and kind of go, hmm, maybe I should change that. In particular, I think maybe your nitrogen, just give us a little background on your nitrogen and, and where you're thinking about going after you look at that yen report. Yeah, Pete. So uh, my nitrogen, uh, I'm a three, uh, I put on three different applications. So uh, the first shot's AMS. Second application is uh, 28%. And then third is a dry product called Amitas. So I've, I've got a total nitrogen uh, application rate of 165 units. But through Yen, we now know that the tissue samples are mine are quite high. They're off the chart to the right. Um, th and also the uh, the nitrogen that is in the grain sample, it's off the chart to the right. Um, and, um, and my protein is high too. It's off the chart to the right, which is, so it's pretty clear to me, I'm probably over applying nitrogen and I'm, I'm looking at probably cutting back the second application. Uh, I don't want to touch the first one. I like the sulfur and a little bit of nitrogen there. So, um, so I'm going to probably pull back. I'm learning that I'm going to probably pull back somewhat. I don't know exactly yet, but final decision probably the day I'm applying. Yeah, yeah, no, but I think that's because if you compare yourself to other growers in terms of your total uh, application versus your total yield, it, it does look like you're applying more nitrogen than, say, Jeff Crone or Norm Lamott that you were on with the Wow Wheat at the Ontario Ag Conference. And so you say, okay, maybe I need to pull back. But yet, when you look at your nitrogen balance, you know, you're actually removing in the grain very close to what you're applying. And so 
it's it's sort of walking that fine line. And I think that's why you say it'll be the day of application. It's always hard to pull back when you're trying to push for that that high yield level, right? Oh, absolutely. And so, you know, it's maybe we'll see how thick the weed is and how, you know, at, at that for maybe the last application, are we, is it looking like lodging could be a concern, you know, and that maybe I pull back a bit on the third one. So it's, it's great that we have this flexibility that we can adjust on the fly. Yeah, and I think you're really pointing out some great points. So Andy, you're one of those guys that actually goes to the field and does stem counts and looks at how thick the field is. And how often do you actually visit that yen wheat field to have a look at what's happening? Mm, oh, probably not as much as Jeffrey Crone, but <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm out there, uh, you know, at least uh, two, three times a week, uh, you know, I'm keeping an eye on things. And so, you know, I just, yeah, it's turned into a bit of a hobby of mine. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I, I think there lies, lies the, the message that, that, you know, one of the messages is, is that you've learned a lot about your nitrogen management and you're reassessing that nitrogen management, even though you're the number two grower. And then you say not as much as the number one grower, Jeff Crone. Meanwhile, you're in the field two to three times a week. I don't even get to my wheat fields two to three times a week for crying out loud. So it's this attention to detail that I really think we've seen this in the end. The winning growers pay attention to, to detail. They're in the field. You're doing the stem counts. And that's what's actually managing where you go with your inputs and, and talking about lodging. All of those things really play. So I think the other thing that we really want to talk about is, is your magnesium. And Give us a little bit of spin around what you've learned on magnesium, where you're taking, because most growers are not looking at magnesium. And I think that's, that's one of those differences in the Andy Timmermans program. Yeah. So I've noticed been, I've been tissue sampling now, I believe for three years. And I've noticed that um, I've got not every field, but a lot of fields are short magnesium early on. And it seems to be worse when it's cool. And um, so anyway, I've been playing around the last couple of years, spraying some foliar magnesium. And um, I, I'm getting a response, uh, you know, like five, six, seven, some farms, eight bushel. Um, and so even when we think that there's enough magnesium in the soil, in the soil test, I've, you know, through our detailed soil analysis, we're able to, through Debron, be able to drill down and find what our, our response is at the different magnesium levels. And I'm astounded. Like, I'm getting response right up to 19% base saturation, where I, where I was, you know, if you listen to a guy like Neil Kinsey, if you have 12 or 13% in the soil, that should be ample. But it's telling us something different. So, um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I'm, we're kind we're adding some seed placed magnesium now, uh, along with the uh, seed placed phosphorus, uh, in the uh, in the form of K mag. Yeah, it, and I think this is one of those really cool things because you do the trials through Devron and you do those blocks in the field, so you get multiple replications, and. Then you look at the at the data in terms of how it relates to, to base saturation. I mean, you, you mentioned Neil Kinsey. If you talk to a guy like Wheat Pete, he would just say, "Man, if you if you're over 200 parts per million magnesium, like Lord help us, you've got to have enough." But that's not what you're seeing. And so, what's cool out of that is now we have a whole lot of other growers. After hearing what you've done and, and some other growers in Ontario around magnesium, we're we're back at the drawing board saying. Does magnesium increase wheat yields? And we're back looking at that that we haven't looked at probably in, in 20 or 30 years. So, I, like, we're the rest of agriculture is learning from guys like Andy Timmermans who are learning through being part of the Yen program. And I, I just think that's kind of neat. Anything else, Andy, that, you know, tell just give me, wrap it up with, with the value Yen brings to your wheat production. Oh, the yen program. So I've been in it 
two years now. And, uh, you know, you're, you're the, the report you get is just, it goes on and on. And I have to actually, I've reread it. I don't know how many times, like it, <laughs> it gives you a lot of detail and it, it's good detail. It, it, and the nice thing about the end is, you know, when you go out and take a tissue sample, you're not just going to one spot, you're going to the 10 flags. And the same with the soils test. So the soil test, you can back up, you know, you match it up with the tissue samples from the exact same locations. And um, yeah, like it, it's, it is, if you're half at all serious about growing wheat, you, you have to be in the end for sure. I love it. That's awesome. With that, thanks so much, Andy, for joining us. I'm learning from you. We're learning from the yen. I think it's just absolutely amazing. Everybody listening, Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com. The Yen is one of those excellent programs that is going to move the bar forward. Growers like Andy applying that information. Whatever you do, make sure you grow great wheat. <laughs>